Welcome to the channel. This is Reliable Rudy. In this video, we're going to go over Google's earnings report. I have not looked at their earnings report yet, but I did see that Google is down 8% today. And here's a little bit of kind of how I had my chart set up going into this. You can see we're trying to hold kind of how I had my downtrend set right here. So pretty interesting. And also this wick, the low of the day, uh, did not get down to this gap fill over here as well. So got some information that I want to go over, but I do want to take a look at their earnings report and uh, share my 10 cents on, on what I think and uh, moving forward into the future with Google. <clears throat> but before we do that, I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Everything in this video contains only my opinion and is for entertainment purposes only. I do have a small position in Google and I own it in uh, some of my index funds as well, so keep that in mind, but I'm going to try and give as unbiased of an opinion as possible. Okay, going into the video. Uh, yeah, to get here, all I did was type in Google Investor Relations, click the very first tab, uh, the very first thing that came up. And that is what brought me to here. So we're going to click on Q3 press release and see what we can find. Um, yeah, CEO makes some opening statements. It looks like uh, revenue went up, increased 6% year over year from the third quarter from 2021. Um, operating income decrease by four billion dollars in there now now this is one thing that would uh, be a little bit alarming to me is the uh, the operating margin so last last year they had operating margin at 32 percent this year 25 percent so a decrease of seven percent operating margin um, so if, so for, for people that are plugging numbers into a model to try and get a projection for a price they want to buy it if they if they were plugging in numbers around this 30 percent because they thought that they were going to get 30 uh google was going to continue putting up 30 percent operating margin and they only put up 25 percent well that's a flaw in your model this is a very easy way to get value trapped into stuff in terms of if you were plugging in 30 percent for that model it may be trying to tell you to buy it at a higher price than what they actually are going to perform uh, so that is a little bit of a concern right there, the lower, uh, the, and that's a larger decrease in operating margin right now. It's not like they decreased like a couple percent. Seven percent is a decent decrease. And they had a decrease in net income. Um, uh, diluted EPS earnings per share decrease as well. So this is also adding in, I'm sure Google probably bought back some shares, but even with that share, the shares that they bought back, this is a decent decrease in earnings per share so a little bit of a red flag right there but uh, let's move on and see what else we can see so we can look at the this looks like the individual ways they earned revenue so we can see they have an increase they have a decrease in their youtube ads so a decrease in the youtube part of their business is that uh, a little bit alarming it is a little bit alarming because you want to see the aspects of their business especially youtube is probably a, a larger part of their business model you want to see that uh, increasing so we have a couple parts of this aspect decreasing and that is the google network and the youtube ads so a little bit alarming there but we do have some good growth right here in the google cloud i know that is a a uh, uh an aspect of multiple businesses that people are trying to push into so it's good that they are having growth in uh, that aspect of things but at the end of the day that's still a low percentage of their total business I mean right around that same range as YouTube but this is pretty good growth on the cloud so that is a positive that comes off of this and still a six percent increase in revenue you know people are probably uh, uh, calculating any larger growth than six percent but if I recall, I believe uh, that was right in between my middle and low assumptions. So kind of right in the ballpark range. And I would say, you know, that could be a down quarter for Google, but I'm also calculating a model for a 10-year span. Uh, more information on the webcast. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, let's go down into the balance sheet. <clears throat> so I can see they're sitting on a little bit more cash. Uh, their account receivable looks like it is down a little bit, so they uh, are getting getting the payments, more payments, and less receivables. So this is the money that's set to that they're set to collect. They have less receivables there. Higher inventory. This is almost a a uh, 
this is a three to one increase on inventory so they're sitting on more inventory total current assets total assets so uh, let's take a look at this um, yeah right around the same ballpark range for total assets and total long-term liabilities let's see if we can find anything on the long-term debt so uh, long-term debt pretty much the same area so this is why it's probably insinuating that they're using uh, some of that net income or free cash flow more towards the buybacks than the long-term debt I don't remember off the top of my head what their uh, average free cash flow is in the quarter but if I recall their debt to free cash flow level is pretty solid so I wouldn't be surprised if they focus more of that free cash flow to buying back shares which is what I uh, personally want to see as a shareholder in Google I want to see them buying back shares so total liabilities down that this sits at a current ratio of over three to one like I said Google is not going anywhere they're not going out of business when they have this many assets compared to their liabilities this is a very good sign I want I like the companies that I'm holding to have solid uh, asset to liability ratio um, let's see what else we have well, let me read this real quick. Okay, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move on from this. Um, more of the revenue. So this is year-to-date revenue. So the their first two quarters actually adding in with this last quarter. This isn't terrible growth. So the six percent down, yeah, a little bit concerning because that's a little bit less of a of an increase compared to the first and second quarter. But at the end of the day, when you're looking from a year-to-date standpoint, this is pretty solid growth right here. Uh, but one thing that is alarming with that growth, the very next line, cost of revenue. So this is year-to-date cost of revenue. This is an increase in it looks like 13, 13 million, 13 million in cost of revenue right there, increase right there. And quarter over quarter, that's four, that, this is an increase, and maybe it's four billion, maybe I'm doing that calculation wrong. Yeah, it looks like it's, so this is an increase of 13 billion in the cost of revenue to obtain that revenue. So is this really that good of revenue growth? It's not the greatest because the cost of revenue is increasing that much. And on a quarter over quarter basis, almost an increase of 4 billion. That is a little bit concerning because I wouldn't look at that revenue growth as extremely good revenue growth. You can see the number, the increase of revenue from 2021 to 2022 is about the same so I wouldn't look at that as uh, I, I would probably deem this revenue as a a little bit of a red flag but it's not the most concerning to me um, and net income so on top of that they probably had other expenses that they had to add in so you can see total cost of expenses that increase right there is probably hurting this net income a little bit so the increase or the decrease in net income is a little bit of a concern. And here we have the shares. So we can see year over year. Now I'd want to see now this is a year over year basis. I would want to see the total amount of shares that they bought during this quarter. But year over year that's pretty decent amount of shares bought. Year over year bought about 300 million shares back. So over the last four quarters they bought 300 million of their shares back decreasing the total amount of shares out there is going to increase the shareholders ownership per share so you want to see them consistently buying back more shares now you know what let's actually go and pull up everything money I want to see uh, what they were sitting at in the previous quarter so I'm gonna to go to the income statement we're gonna switch this to quarterly it doesn't look like they have it updated but I can see um, these are the shares that they bought back from last quarter so they bought back about 70 million they bought back 50 million they bought back another 70 million and now they've gone from 13.13 to 13 so they bought back about 120 uh, million shares during this quarter that is an increase in shares bought back for this quarter so I would look at that as a pretty solid uh, standpoint here's why I'm going to show you we're going to go to the metrics tab and you can see this return on equity right here this is them re are 
this is how efficient they are with their share buybacks and the dilution of shares of course it goes both ways but the increase in the amount of shares that they're buying is a is a positive to me because this is me saying okay they're they were patient they didn't focus on buying a lot of shares when the price was up here and more so they're buying them down here so I do like that look that they increase the amount of shares that they're buying back I look at that as a big positive but even with the lower amount of shares the EPS miss I'm sure I, I did see a headline that they missed on EPS I think they were estimated a dollar twenty five so that's a decent miss but at the end of the day uh, I think long term they're going to continue the buyback shares and they're going to benefit the long term shareholders of the company uh, statement of cash flows Let's see if they just have a oh yeah they do right here um, so free cash flow on the quarter uh, I'm sure this is probably a decrease from the last quarter but 16 billion in free cash flow and we can see they bought back hundred and twenty million shares so a large majority of that free cash flow is going back to buying back shares and I'm going to show you why they're able to do that and now just to keep it simple it's because look at this long-term liabilities divided by five-year average free cash flow they can pay off all their long-term liabilities in one year of free cash flow this is why they are able to fo focus more on buying back shares and that's one thing that I like as a shareholder when they're able to buy back more and more shares quarter after quarter so still free cash flow positive now let's actually go look at the cash flow statement see what type of cash flow they brought in last year so I can see this is the third quarter from last year if I go down the free cash flow so this is a decent decrease in free cash flow as well and you can see that this is kind of going on but if you're looking from the second quarter to the third quarter it is a little bit of an increase in free cash flow now we know that uh, from an economic standpoint this year it, it's been pretty hectic out there so it's nice to see that they ha are having a little bit of a pop from the second quarter to the third quarter in terms of increasing that free cash flow I'd want to see this get back up into some consistent growth so I want to see the next quarter build off of this 13 billion or no not 13 billion 16 billion so 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 16 billion comparing that to the last quarter of free cash flow I, I like that that's a decent increase I want to see that continue going on to the next quarter and um uh, this breaks down the areas of the globe that they're getting revenue. Okay. Um, there anything else? And and this is the so kind of a short earnings report here, only nine pages. I wonder if I there's more information out there. You know, I might even go listen into the earning or the uh, the earnings call, but you know, I'm not too focused on that right now. We're gonna move on. We're gonna talk more about this gap down right here. So. Um, I have this downtrend set right here. I really want to see this price hold, but if this gives out without having a pop, more than likely I'm going to see we're going to see this price come down uh, down into this next window. Now you can see this window is set. We have a gap fill right here, gap fill right here, gap fill fill right here. I want to see it hold above this downtrend. So I want to see it actually extend up. Try to fill this large gap right here. It's probably not going to fill it. But at the end of the day, I just want to see a short little pop off this before we crack down. Because I don't want to get back underneath this trend line. But if we get that short pop and then we come back down to this range, I'd want to see this downtrend uh, meet up with this in some way, shape, or form in this next window. And that would strike me to sort of add to the position as it's only a small position right now. But at the end of the day... Uh, you can see the battles taking place as we speak. Now, if I, let's get rid of this. And you can see this battles taking place. It does have a nice wick bottom right here at this previous support that's trying to hold, but there was no action. The open price actually opened beneath this gap fill. So we gap up on this day. We try to come back down and fill it. This kind of back tests the top of this downtrend. You get a nice extension. Now, on this earnings day, we reported earnings yesterday. The close happens at the previous low. This is not, this candle itself is bullish, but going into earnings, this is clear resistance. It acts as support multiple times, and over here it acted as resistance, so it acts as resistance, acts as support. 
we cracked below that support now it's acting as resistance this is not uh, a good sign in my opinion which is why I think that the price is probably gonna eventually come down to this window and how it acts from there I'm not hundred percent sure but nonetheless I want to see it try the hold on top of this downtrend I don't want to see it get back underneath that um, and if and if the if it is able to get bullish, let's see how let's see it actually fully push up and fill this gap down. If it's able to do that in the next couple of weeks, I would say that's a pretty bullish sign that this support is going to try to hold, and we're going to consolidate sideways until we get to this longer term downtrend. So you can see we have our downtrend from the start of this downtrend: one, two, three, four, fourth wave back test on the bottom of wave one, and we get our fifth wave. Now I want to see it hold and trade sideways for a while. I don't want to see this support give out, but if it does, we already have a decent understanding of where its pot potential drop is going to come down to, and that's this next window that I have marked in right here from 90, call it 92 to 89 inside of that window. That's my update on Google's chart. Now let's see how the Nasdaq's acting. Now that the Nasdaq, even with Google being a part of the Nasdaq, is still trying to hold in in inside of this range. And you can see, uh, if I get rid of this line, this was just insinuating a wave five. But there is a downtrend like this, in a sense. And you can see we have a little bit of a trading day above that, but I've already talked about one, two, three points of contact right here and how it pretty much meets in right at the top of that. It's got to pick a direction, and the direction it chose was down here. Now we're pretty much broken. This is a confirm to me that even with the earnings of, of Google and Microsoft that the NASDAQ holding up above here, if we do trade down to this range, we have the top of this downtrend that could get good action. I want to see some sort of higher low from this bottom form in. So I'm going to take out this downtrend and show you kind of what I'm insinuating is if we trade back down to this window right here, that I want to see a higher low and I want to see it go and attempt to test this downtrend that we have right here. Now matching that up with this type of look, we have a decent this is sort of starting to form a inverse head and shoulders and where this price meets up at is the same price right here so if we trade down to the top of this range this is would be the completion of the inverse of the head and shoulders this right here I wouldn't consider because the price does not push up to this high but now that we push up to this high if we trade down here it's going to complete that kind of inverse head and shoulders. Now let's see it push up to that downtrend and see how it acts. It's probably going to get rejected initially, but if it can start this uptrend right here, it's going to be a good resting area if we get rejected from this downtrend. So you get rejected from the downtrend. One, we push down, complete the inverse head and shoulders. We get some sort of pop up to this downtrend. And a rejection from this downtrend, I want to see this uptrend get good action and finally push this downtrend, completing this inverse head and shoulders look right here. Now when we push this downtrend, I want to see this trend line continue to act. As we pull this further aside, this could meet in with the top of the downtrend and it could be early signs of a run. Now where this run could go up to... This is one big five wave structure right here. This could also be looked at as one single wave. There's your one single wave where you then have a retrace where I'm going to be focused on the 702. Here's my 702, this blue line. Now if we get rejected from there, it's gonna instantly trigger me to think, okay, we could be looking at some sort of longer five wave structure that ends up panning out like this. Now, this would be pretty bloody for the market, and this wave three could come down lower, but this is some sort of look that I would look for, and we have pretty solid support built in down here. So, this is one thing that I could see transpire. This could be the start of a retrace phase. I do not want to see this retrace get rejected in that 702 to the 786 range, because that would be a very bearish sign for me. But short term, this could be a retrace phase, an opportunity uh, in the short term to take advantage of. But long term, it could end up being uh, pretty bloody for the market. Now, if it doesn't get uh, held up at this area, 
I'd want to see it kind of consolidate sideways and hold this support. And I want to see it truly test up to the top, pushing truly through all of this, all of these uh, retrace areas. That would be pretty good confirmation to me that, you know, we're probably just going to trade sideways for a while. And if we're lucky enough, we can maybe take out this all time high sometime in the next couple of years. That would be pretty bullish for me. But, yep, that's a bear in a bull case scenario for the NASDAQ. And that is my update on uh, Google as well. I hope you guys enjoy the content in this video. And we'll see you on the next one.